Well, I've traveled to the fantastic Glebe complex of lakes today in Leicestershire. We're on Lake Nine and I'm on a corner peg, which is uh, no surprise if anyone who knows my reputation. And hopefully I can show you how I would approach a corner swim like this. We're just about moving into sort of springtime, so the fish are just starting to wake up. We've had a lot of wind, a lot of rain, so there's some colour in the lake as well. I'm confident the fish are going to come into the shallowish water, not into like really, really shallow water, but they're going to start coming, venturing in to shallower water, and that's when you catch the bigger weights and those bigger carp. So hopefully, we'll see how we get on, but hopefully I can just show you how we catch a few fish, just as it's starting to warm up, and just as those bigger carp are starting to feed. Well, if I was in a normal peg in the middle of the lake, I probably wouldn't feed the margins from the off. But as we're in a corner, I've got a big long bank up there and it's all my water. No one else can touch it. There's even a rope stopping people get anywhere near me. So I would actually feed a corner swim from the off. Um, I can go all the way up that bank, but I'm only going to go 13 metres to start with. I can go 14, even 16 metres if I have to. But I'm going to start cautiously at 13 metres, feed that from the off. And, and take it from there. Um, and I'll probably give it 20, 30 minutes just to settle, fish probably on a short pole line, and then we'll have a quick early look and see if there's anything there. Because if there's fish there, we can catch them straight away on a corner peg, peg like that. And we've still got 14, 16 minutes to chase them if we have to. So as it's early season, um, I'm going down a sort of softish pellet route, um, or softish bait route, should I say. Um, I've got micro pellets, I've got dead maggots, I've got a bit of ground bait, which we may or may not put in. We'll have to wait and see. And um, I've got corn as well. So no hard pellets, uh, no, no big baits as such. Oh, and I've got some expanders as well. Four and six mil expanders are low. I think six mil expanders are pretty much all I'll be putting on the hook. But to kick things off really cautiously, palm falls of bait just to kick things off. Um, I'm going to put a small palm full of micro pellets in and a small palm full of dead maggots in. That's enough to let a few fish settle there and um, whilst I fish elsewhere for 20 minutes hopefully a few fish will settle there. There will be some silverfish, some perch and things like that probably that will mop up a few of those offerings as well so I'm hoping that will be enough for 20-30 minutes before I actually go down there. And I have got a swim to my right that I plumbed up as well but I'm not going to touch that until I know what's happening on that swim there. We could just switch to corn, we could switch to just pellets, but it's all, all down to what happens on that 13 metre swim and also how well I catch on this short pole swim to start with. Well, that's a good sign. I've been down the edge and um, with three dead maggots to begin with and the first two fish were perch. I thought, oh dear, we might just have a little nest of perch. Just try and negotiate this bush behind me. But I've swapped to a, oh, he's going a bit. I thought I'd carry on feeding my micros and dead maggots and just put a six mil expander on, missed the bite and then I've hooked this. So um, it's often the case you feed maggots early, you do get a bit of trouble with perch and silverfish. Um, so I wasn't too surprised, but I'm confident of catching on maggots later on because I just think it's a more positive bait to fish when the fish actually do arrive. But this, this feels like a good fish. And we'll stick with pellet for, for a few fish, I think. And then, but we'll keep trying the maggot because I think I just do like catching them on maggots when they properly arrive. Ooh, should have netted in then. But they're uh, nice looking fish in this lake. Nice little short, fat, healthy looking things. They're going to get big very, very quick, I think, in this place. Right, so we're up and running down the edge. Nice, almost a fully scaled mirror. Always had that. <sighs> Lovely. Shall we hold him up for the camera? I'm going to your way. Nice chunky mirror on the pellet down the side. 
and he's even putting his dorsal fin up for us. My margin swims today are three foot deep, um, which I find about the perfect sort of depth for this time of year whilst we're still on the change. Obviously we can move into two and a half foot or two foot later on. But for fishing in three foot, I've got my, my old faithful Malman Mojo pole floats, which I designed, they're just absolutely perfect. Two mil hollow tip, glass stem for stability and also strength, it won't buckle like a wire stem will. And just a nice short stubby float. Um, two mil bristle, nice thick bristle so you can support a big bait and it won't drag under when you get line bites. So, um, but I've got two rigs up. My main rig is, um, they're both on 020 line for, for durability and strength again, Paramicron line. And then um, this, my main rig goes down to an 014 Paramicron hook length, which is 15 centimeters long. And then a 16 hook, which is a great all round size for any sort of baits really, pellets, corn, three dead maggots and then I've just got a spread bulk of um, that's five number nine shot and just a little trimming shot there as well but that's five number nine these 0.3 floats normally take and that's it oh and that goes up to um, 12 to 14 uh, slick elastic which is absolutely ideal for fishing at this time of year where we don't quite know what we're going to catch but we expect it to be a decent sized fish now the other rig I've got is a proper proper man's rig really it's um I'm hoping to use this a bit later on in the year, but it might come into play um, today, we don't know. It's, um, it's 020 and it's actually direct to a size 12 gaff of a hook, <laughs> a really big hook. And, and because I'm fishing, um, this will be for double corn, um, eight, nine, 10 dead maggots, or even a couple of big expanders. You could put an eight mil expander on it if I had some, or two six mil expanders, big baits. So it's big, strong um, rig, thick line big hook and because of that I don't need a spread bulk I just have a block of number nine shot about eight to ten inch from, from the hook there's no need for any any anything more um, complicated than a bulk when you're fishing such a big hook bait because it acts like a big plummet anyway again it's the same 0.3 float and the only other difference because I'm using a big hook thick line I can get away with thicker elastic and really boss the fish so I've got my favorite 16 to 18 slick really strong stuff but it does seem to come out it'll still come out a couple of foot for for like smaller fish but it's really good if you're on a load of fish or some really big fish as well. So we'll see later on, this rig might come into play. I hope it does, but um, if not, by the time you get to see this video, it'll be coming into play a lot more. But that's my favorite rig for bagging. But at the moment, we're gonna stick to a, a bit more negative rig, 014 to a 16 hook and lighter elastic. Right, well I've had a couple of carp down the edge and a couple of perch, but um, what I've had on my last three or four casts now, I've been lifting the rig up and I've just noticed a bit of um, debris or muck or weed or dead grass or something like that on the bottom every time. And, um, and obviously you won't get a bite whilst that's on the hook. So I think some fish have come in now and they're kicking up some dead matter that's on the bottom. Um, so I'm gonna have to bury my pellet completely inside to see if that helps. Um, I'm also going to try corn and you can really bury the hook inside corn but if it keeps happening then I'm going to have to move swim because um, I just think there's some matter on the bottom and the fish are just kicking it up so it's very strange to get all this black horrible stuff but this time of year fish um, stuff has died down on the bottom um, and it's obviously settled where I've been fishing so we're going to persevere for a little bit but I'm already thinking I might have to just move a meter further up the bank to see if we can get on a cleaner bottom again. Come on, straight under.
Well, I've just hooked another angry fish down the side. And he's starting to come in now. And um, I've just had the last two on corn. So um, I think it's important to say that, especially at this time of year when everything's on the change, there's no need to be so fixed in, in your approach. I haven't come and said, I'm just gonna fish pellets or I'm just gonna fish maggots. Oh, I'm just going to fish corn. I've got them all on my side tray. And because I'm feeding quite cautiously and quite negatively, there's nothing to stop me starting on one bait and quickly swapping to another. I think they clean out the bait pretty fast. And um, I can quickly swap between baits as the session progresses, really. So I'm not, I've not come here to fish a specific bait. I've got pellets, soft pellets, dead maggots, corn, all on my side tray. And at the moment, it feels like pellets and corn are the way to go. So, um, but in a bit, I could easily swap to maggots and it might be much better on maggots. But at the moment, definitely a buried bit of corn is avoiding that weed. And, um, and I'm getting nice, positive, fast bites on it as well. And this one does not want to come in and say hello. <laughs> come on, they're lovely fish in this lake. They've definitely pulled on weight since I last fished this lake, although there are some monstrous fish in here as well, which would be nice if we can catch one. My biggest fish from this lake, I think we weighed it just over 15 pound, and I know there's bigger ones than that in here. So, uh, but at the moment they're like these, I'll call them stockies, but they're like three, four pound a piece. So, uh, but they're really nice chunky fish. And uh, certainly uh, give my elastic a good workout today. Come on, this time. Oh, yes. Like a fully scaled mirror, that looks like. Yep. Big old scales on him. Where's he up to? Just in the side. Oh, he's got loads and loads of lice around his uh, mouth. So he's obviously been sitting up still in the cold. And that's a good sign that it's still not warmed up quite just yet. But, uh,. Lovely fully scaled mirror if it'll play ball. Might be a bit too slippy to pick up. <laughs> there you are, lovely fully scaled mirror. Let's pull him back, he's a bit lively. A good little tip is even though we're feeding with a, a mini sort of toss pot, is don't be in any rush to put your hook bait over the top of that feed. I've dropped it, my bait in and I'm in no rush to drop that hook bait in because I don't want my hook bait to overtake the feed. I want it to fall in unison with the feed or just after the feed so it's on the bottom ready. If you put your hook bait in too soon, sometimes a few fish will rush in above the feed and you'll foul hook them. So don't be in any rush. It'll pay out in the long run. Just that little bit of a pause, two or three seconds, then put the rig in and you'll get a cleaner bite and a fish in the mouth. Well, I'm still picking up rubbish on the bottom and I've just foul hooked a fish in the posterior, but I got him in. But it's just telling me really, I need to find a cleaner bottom out there. So I'm just gonna pop my 14 and a half meter section on. And even though I did plumb the depth first thing, I'm just gonna be double sure that I'm fishing where I, I think I should be fishing. And uh, it's a nicer shadow there to fish into anyway. Um, yeah, I'm just checking. It's nice and flat there actually. Hopefully I can just fish on a bit of a cleaner bottom and just get another run of fish. Um, I just think the fish have really kicked up that bottom and kicking up a lot of muck. Hopefully there's less muck a metre and a half further up the bank. But with the knowledge I've just had from what I've been doing already, I'm just gonna feed a, a small amount of micros and corn and, um, and cut the dead maggots out completely at the moment. I might try feeding dead maggots down this side here, just as an experiment. But um, I'm just gonna go in with pellets and corn up the side at 14 and a half metres now. And, uh, just starting off with the kinder pot, small amount of bait. Hopefully that will put us in back in touch with the fish.
Well, that is a proper unit to end the session on. Exactly what margin fishing is all about. Signs that things are really warming up. And um, I can't wait for a bit more margin fishing this spring, especially when fish like that are possible. What a beauty. Well, I hope you've picked up some tips how to catch some fish down the edge. Hopefully you can catch a few fish like this too.